Hello there. Today I'm going to be reacting and breaking down Warthod Ron from Halo 3. Boom! Yeah, we started with a pedal tone, transitioning into a tribal percussion. And those choirs are really cool. The Halo choirs. <laughs> okay. This is cool. It's It was doing basically almost like a counter melody with accents. And a, a like a inspiring phrase on the high, on the higher strings. It's building up. And we come back to the yeah, the theme that we hear in the beginning. <laughs> it's just staying in the pocket, you know? Okay. I really thought that it was going to transition to something way bigger, but no. Oh my god, I love that the, the, the theme is played in the piano. That's a fantastic arrangement right there. The first thing that I must say is that this song keeps to herself. Its purpose is to create atmosphere and a fair amount of tension in a threshold that gets surpassed very sporadically to inject the song with more stakes, especially in the transitions, but overall, this track is not really trying to get your attention. It wants to be low-key, feeding the storytelling of what's happening in the game, as it should. Now, I was told that you're driving a war dog, driving yourself off some collapsing platforms. So it makes sense that the song is that long with each transition, you know, the song evolves, introduces new layers like the pianos to signal the player there is progression in the run. The song has quote unquote kind of faces, but obviously these faces are very intertwined between each other because it's the same song 
but with different arrangements here and there. So it leads me to believe that this is implemented in the game in an adaptive way. You know, it's adaptive music, meaning that certain cues of the track will trigger depending on what you do in the game or to which checkpoint, you know, you are in the run. Now, what catches my attention the most is the callback to the Halo 1 theme, because although it might not be exactly the same, the choirs are indeed very reminiscent of it. But even more sneaky is the tribal percussion because in Halo 1 there is a lot of jungle biomes. So if the run in Halo 3 has structures, maybe you're in a Covenant facility or something, the tribal percussion becomes a second unassuming, maybe even unintentional callback to Halo 1. Because to be fair, tribal percussion is used so much for chasings that the literacy of it being tribal is not important at all. But one does wonder still. By the way, if you made it this far, thank you so much. So while you're at it, why don't you make a roll to press that like button? <laughs> this sounds like progressive rock. This is a great theme. <laughs> oh my god, the, the piano... Introducing the piano in the piece is so good. <laughs> and now it's layering the the choir from the beginning that sounds awesome isn't this choir like like a theme from halo one i think it's a callback for, from halo one It keeps in the pocket. But the perco the percussion has been has been very straightforward all the way. By design, by the way. Yeah, I think those choirs are a callback to the uh, the Halo One theme. I think it is. Which is one of my favorite Halo songs, by the way. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> those harp runs made it a little bit uh, more melodic for sure. I think that's the resolution of the song, probably. It would be cool if, if we hear the choirs now. As a final callback to Halo 1. Now, we need to talk about the resolution. It ends with an ascending scale in the piano that has some degree of tension in it, but ultimately resolves in a bright set of notes. And the fact that the scale is ascending is very important because the higher you go in the register, the higher the notes, the more you get the sensation of accomplishment and success. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, check this other reaction that I did, alright? I'll see you there.